All right, thank you, Raina. And welcome everybody. We are, in case you haven't checked your uh, calendar in a week, uh, we're in December now. So we have switched gears in terms of uh, our focus on materials and we're gonna be working with watercolors all this month. Uh, watercolors are really good portable medium to work with. Um, so I thought this would be a good, a good month to if you you know kind of get behind the curve a little bit in your gift giving this uh, this month, uh, you can uh, whip something up in in watercolor and hopefully we can uh, we can help that along. So that's that's the idea here. These are meant to be finished and we'll you know fingers crossed we'll see how this goes. We'll try and get them done in the one hour. So I want to work fast. I want to work loose. I want to get you know sort of a lot of uh, information down really quick. I'm going to work pretty small. Um, so, uh, but that's that's just my choice. If you want to work bigger and you have bigger brushes and and you got more room to spread out, um, by all means. But the idea is, I want to get something really quick and and really uh, fast down. Um, and watercolor suits that kind of working uh, method. So that's that's kind of where we're at today. Um, there's only going to be three um, demos classes this month. Um, next week will be a. Uh, uh, one of the premium ones where you know you you pay and come in and it's, you get a much more intimate setting um, and much better format to sort of ask a lot of questions and sort of get me one on one and things like that. Um, and that's going to be in watercolor as well. And then the last one will be uh, what's the date? It will be the twentieth. Yes, I think that's the last one. So the twentieth will be the last one this month, and then we'll start up again in the new year. Uh, I believe on January fourth. So. Um, Keep that in mind as we're going along. Okay, so let's get right to it. I wanna show you um, our supply list, which is a little bit different obviously than last week's um, because we are in watercolor. And so I've got six colors listed here, um, white, yellow ochre, raw umber, ultramarine blue, cadmium red, cadmium yellow. I'm actually gonna be using a lot more colors than that, but if you have just those six colors, that's more than enough. Basically, your three primaries, a couple of earth tones, and the uh, the watercolor white uh, will be more than enough to get you going. And even if you, uh, for some reason, don't have watercolor and only have gouache, gouache will also work for this as well. It's usually the other the other way around. When we're working in gouache, people always have watercolor, but gouache is a little rarer for people. Um, but either will work. Um, then you're going to need some sort of rag. I've got a roll of paper towels, uh, masking tape to tape your uh, paper down. That is not 100% necessary, but it is super helpful, as you will see, um, if you don't use it, because your, your paper tends to warp with all the paper on it. Um, and then watercolor brushes, which I'll get into. I'll just show you the ones that I'm going to be using for this, uh, for this demonstration. Um, but they do, you do want to have watercolor brushes. There are some that sort of uh, thread the needle between, you know, you can use them for acrylics and you can use them for uh, watercolor, but watercolor sp uh, specific brushes are probably your best bet. Um, and then we're going to have watercolor paper uh, and it should be 140 pound minimum weight. And, and what that means is it's just sort of, of the right thickness. Anything heavier than that is good. Um, 90 pound is usually the next step down. That's a little thin. You can still get away with it, um, but 140 pound is a good solid uh, working paper. Uh, so if you've got that, that's that's probably your best bet. And then a disposable palette or a plastic palette. Um, I actually have both um, and I'll show you that uh, as well. And the picture that I'm gonna work from today is, is this lovely little, looks like summer scene. Um, by an artist named Gabriel Munter. You can see the little uh, description on the bottom there. I've written down the artist name, Gabriel Munter. This is Fräulein Ellen im Gras, so Miss Ellen in the Grass. And it's from 1934. So this is sort of a um, post-impressionist, uh, pre-modernist, I guess we're sort of in the modern era, getting close to it anywhere, anyway. Um, and it's just a nice kind of airy, breezy, uh, painting. I'm not going to go for exact uh, replicas here of this because because one, this painting is in oils and we're going to be doing it in, in watercolor, so it's going to be a very different feel to it. Um, but that's that's part of what I want to show you today is is kind of how to translate uh, from one medium uh, to watercolor. It's it's 
you know, it's a good way to, you can oftentimes go to a museum and take your watercolors and do little uh, sketches of some of the bigger, more involved paintings. So uh, watercolors are, are really flexible like that. So we'll uh, learn a little bit about that as we go. Okay, that I believe is all of our, if you wanna take a screenshot of this, um, the picture that I have on my scene is a little small today. So if you wanna get a shot of this and, and blow it up and put it next to your working screen, uh, that might be a, a helpful little addition. So I'll just leave it up here for a few more seconds and we can go to our overhead scene here. So the size of the paper that I'm using today, like I said, is pretty small. This is six by seven inches. Um, and I've got a little uh, uh, masking tape uh, ring around it to keep it flat. Um, the reason I went a little bit smaller today is, you know, with it being the month of Christmas and gift giving and all that other uh, good stuff, um, six by seven is a really easy thing. You can go down to, you know, Michael's or another, your framing, local framing store or uh, art supply store, and you can buy little mats, just little, um, you know, sort of hardboard mats. Actually, it's this material here, sort of a nice thick, you know, you, you can't really bend it, but it just sort of forms the little uh, mat around it. And then you can just throw it in sort of a standard frame, like a, a nine by 12 frame would probably house this pretty well if you get a nice uh, mat that's that size. And then you could just slide it into a, um, you could slide it into a, a frame and boom, instant gift. So that's uh, another advantage of working a little bit smaller. It's not gonna cost you as much for the frame. Okay, so here we are. And we have our image right here, Miss Ellen in the grass. And I am going to start by doing a little bit of a sketch. A sketch is not 100% necessary, but in this case, there is sort of a, a, a definite uh, figure and a uh, background thing that I want to establish early on. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to do that. I'm not going to be, you know, super uh, true to form here and get everything in, but I want to get the figure sort of in the grass uh, to keep uh, at least with the spirit of it. Um, and as usual, during all of these, if you have any questions, just throw them in the chat, just type a little thing in the chat and then Raina will uh, transfer to me and I can uh, I can answer your questions uh, as as we uh, as we go along here. Let me just do one thing really quick. Okay, good. Okay, so here we are to do the sketch. Sorry, I'm going from screen to screen here. Um, the things you're looking for is for something like this where you've got a person, a, a figure. I mean, you could be doing a portrait of an animal or a still life or whatever. I'm always looking for for the different edges of the page, like where where the figure comes to in relation to the top, into the bottom, and to the left, and to the right, and I try to work with with uh, with those kind of outside edges. Um, so I'm just going to make some marks. Her her face, her head is is positioned pretty much right in the middle, slightly off center, I would say. So right about here, you know, right you know this pencil is going to go right right through her nose and mouth about like, like that. So I'm just gonna kind of do a quick little uh, hash mark here. And I'm using a colored pencil. You can use a regular uh, number two pencil or a, a graphite pencil. Um, I'm not as big a fan with graphite pencils because they tend to kind of intrude a little bit. They're kind of a dark uh, color. So I like to use something that's a little more muted. This is just a uh, Carondage, which is, uh, I believe that's French. Um, and it's an oil-based one because we're going to be working in watercolor, so this won't, it won't run. You don't want to use a, a watercolor pencil for something like this unless you want that pencil to kind of bleed when you put the water down. So I don't want that to happen. So I am just going to make my marks with um, oil-based pencil. All right, hey, so Mike, what size is your, your paper? The, this paper here is six by seven inches. But once again, that is, you know, kind of up to you in terms of uh, how big or how small you want to go. I'm just working small for, for the reasons I described earlier. I have already can tell I've made the head too big. Um, so having a little eraser handy is always nice. So 
I'm probably going to bring the head up to here, bring the shoulders up. And these preliminary sketches are always kind of shorthand. Um, the hip needs to be out. It's further out. It's another, it's wider than her head. So I'm going to put that out there. Uh, let's see. Knees, there's kind of a nice little triangle right here, which comes out right about, comes a little lower actually. So just, just getting a very rough outline. This is a, um, Gabriel Munter was a, a painter and she was part of a movement called the Blue Rider, Der Blau Reiter, which was started by her and Vasily Kandinsky and uh, a few other Franz Marc. Uh, sort of a German art movement. And it was very much uh, built around the premise of, uh, you know, color had, had meaning and, uh, you know, sort of a, a different symbolic uh, associations. Like blue was very spiritual and red was very kind of uh, passionate and animalistic and things like that. Um, and so they're, they're very much about the color and, you know, it's not super descriptive. It's just more of a, um, not an excuse, but a, a way to kind of explore color and let, and let the color uh, give a lot of sort of emotion, emotional impact. So here we go. I can't tell what she has in her hand. It looks like she might be peeling an apple, but it also looks like she's kind of holding a stick of butter, which is kind of weird. Hopefully that's just me and not Ellen. All right, there we go. So just getting the basic outline of things here. All right. This is probably as once I got the drawing down, I'm, I'm kind of going to go off script a little bit with the uh, with the image and, and do a little kind of additive stuff. But for now, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and be good and and follow along with the uh, program that Gabriel Munter laid out for us. Uh, so you can you can kind of see here. I'm oh that hand looks like a lobster claw. I'll have to fix that. That's no good. Don't want that. Be haunted by the ghost of Ellen. Say, so what do you think you're doing to me? All right, that's a little bit better. All right, I can work with it anyway. I'm just trying to get the the main stuff kind of oriented correctly in space. So we have someone wondering, do you have a preferred watercolor paper? Is it like professional or is it like student grade? The, the stuff that I have is uh, just a Canson, which is, you know, sort of an entry level, uh, not too sophisticated. I mean, if, if, if I'm spending a ton of time on a, on a painting and I, and I really uh, you know, want sort of a higher quality grade. Fabriano is a nice brand. Um, but Canson Strathmore, you know, sort of all the stuff that you'll buy, uh, you know, you can, you can just buy them at the supermarket, really. Um, they're fine. They, they work okay. Um, you know, if, if you make a good painting, it doesn't matter the, doesn't matter the brand that you're using. It does, uh, it does make a difference, though, I will say. Good Good paper is and good brushes and, and good pigment. Uh, they're really nice when you when you finally you know make the plunge and and sort of get some of that that higher end stuff. It really is. You do notice it. It just tends to to be a little bit more durable. The color is a little bit brighter. Um, you know, it's it just sort of ups ups the game all across the board. There we go. She's looking like an Olympic rower here. She's got quite, quite the broad shoulders. There we go. All right. I 
think that's going to work for our our figure for the time being. And let's put that little towel or blanket she's on right in the background. Just trying to establish kind of the main color shapes here. Let's do. A little bit of refinement here. The good thing about um, doing a pencil sketch with um, with watercolors is um, most of the time you can erase even after you've put paint down. It, it will make a little bit of a, a mark, but it's it's pretty easy to kind of you, you can count on it. You can you can do some corrections um, and not have to worry about completely you know ruining your your painting. So, and then I'm just going to put a little blue bit there, a little blue bit there. And I think we got a little, a little bowl here. I'm going to go with apples. I don't think she'd be sitting out in the field cutting up butter. That doesn't seem very logical. All right. There we go. Let's throw that there. And then the rest of the stuff I'm going to just add in on the fly. All right, so I got my figure, nice spring day, nice summer day. Um, and I'm just gonna start blocking in with, with big, uh, big areas of color. So for, for this painting, the biggest thing is all this green. She's in the grass um, and I'm gonna start it. Um, there's quite a bit of yellow, if you notice in here, um, in, especially in through this area. So I'm gonna start with kind of a, a, a layer of, uh, this is kind of a lemon yellow. I, I'll just show you the, the colors that I'm using. This is a, a set. This is sort of a real basic entry level set of, of different colors. I think there's 24, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, there's 24 colors here. This costs like 12 bucks. This is the sort of the artist's loft beginner set for watercolors. Um, but it really gives you kind of a lot to work with, probably more than you need. Um, but this is the set that I'm working with. So um, even though I've got a bunch of greens, I want to I want to mix I want to mix a green a little bit. And so I'm going to start with. Um, can you see all that? That what I'm doing here? Let's have a look. Yeah, you can. All right, good. So all I'm doing is I'm just taking some of this really bright kind of lemon yellow, sort of a primary yellow, like a cadmium yellow, and then some of the yellow ochre just so it's not so harsh. Um, so it's, it's just more of a warm earthy yellow. And um, I'm going to actually pre-wet this, do a little wet into wet, which is always something that is good for people that haven't uh, tried it. And I'm just gonna get all the areas that have the green in damp. And you can see that the, uh, the marks that I've made are not going anywhere because they're oil-based. So, so far so good. And really try and put the water only where you want the green to be. I dipped, I, I dabbed a little bit on her knee, so I may have to do a little repair work. So just a nice loose coat. And then I'm going to throw this yellow on here. Now, obviously, this is not the color of that, but it being watercolor, um, I'm going to put some blues on and kind of mix the color on the paper by layering it. But you can see how this, um, this yellow that I'm putting down is a little bit more golden than that really bright lemon yellow. Yeah, there we go. It's not leaking too badly into the, into the leg. So just letting the water that's on there kind of spread around, you know, just distribute that yellow kind of in a nice, um, fairly even pattern. This would be 
Helen in a field of yellow daisies at the moment, but soon it will be grass. Fear not. All right. So that's good. And now I'm just going to start putting some blues in here kind of randomly. Now, one thing about color uh, is co not all color is created equal. There are some colors that are stronger and more vibrant um, and have what's called better tinting strength. Um, and yellow is the weakest color. So I do not have to put a lot of blue in here. And what I may end up doing is, is actually just sort of mixing a little bit of green. Um, I'm not sure if I like that. Eh, that's actually pretty good. So we'll go a little bit dull. I mean, we could take another yellow, like a phthalo, or a, excuse me, a blue, like a phthalo blue. And that would give you a really vibrant green. But this, this painting doesn't really have a lot of like super saturated, uh, you know, kind of like green grass green. It's a little bit more, it's a little bit mellower. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna err on the side of it, it being a little bit uh, calmer green. So some, something in this area, but still a lot of yellow in here. And I'm just gonna kind of dab some of this around. And just let let the let the water do the work. It's actually a fairly good match. Um, I'm not trying to to be totally beholden to exactly what the color scheme is here. Just want to get kind of the the spirit of it. All right. And I think this blue that I'm using is kind of like a uh, it's like a, a cobalt or a cerulean. It's not yellow. Uh, it's not, uh, excuse me, French ultramarine blue. Um, I think that's that blue up there. Uh, so it's, um, it's a little bit of a lighter blue. That's, that's looking a little darker. So I'll just take a little more water, maybe even throw a little more yellow in there. Kind of go back and forth a little bit. There we go. Sort of mellows it out. But with, with watercolor, I mean, one of the sort of the uh, cardinal rules, I guess you could call it, is you want to start with your lighter colors and kind of work to darker colors. It's not a hard and fast, like, you know, you can obviously uh, mix it up a little bit. I uh, missed a little spot in there, so I'll just have to add that. Um, but it is one that, if in doubt, um, I would sort of err on the side of working in that direction from light to dark. And you notice I'm not worrying about putting the, uh, you know, the, in, the little flowers and things in there yet. That's gonna come in a, in a bit. Um, I'm just trying to block in kind of big shapes here and give myself a, a, a nice uh, strong base color to work with. All right. So just kind of working the blue, not being too over the top with it. I mean, if I tried to just put a straight blue in here, that yellow would be gone in an instant. I want sort of little bits of the yellow to kind of pop through, like you can see in the, uh, in the corner there in the, uh, the little photograph I posted of the painting. Um, so we're just gonna sort of work our way towards that darker green. All right. All right, so I think now I'm gonna start, maybe I'll take a little bit of a different blue. Um, let's see what else we got over here. If there's another cobalt blue pew. Eh. All right, primary phthalo, that's, that's a, here, here's a risky move for us. Let's try this. This is a very, this will make a pr pretty uh, vibrant green um, and, and it'll make it a little darker because it's a slightly darker blue. So I'm just gonna see what happens. There's a lot of kind of darker areas down here and up in here. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pop this in. I mean, you can see that's much stronger, much more intense. It kind of scares me. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty bright, but you know what? Let's go for it. 
It can always mellow it with the more earthy um, yellow. So it doesn't get too over the top. So like mixing this with phthalo, you know, your primary yellow with your, with the uh, straight phthalo, that's gonna give you a, a really powerful green. So I, I, I went back to the, or the earth yellow and um, I, I think that's giving us sort of a, a nice dark green, but not, not over the top like that was right there. Although I'm gonna leave a little bit of that in there because um, it's, you know, grass is just not green. There's a lot of varieties. There's yellows in there. There's oftentimes there's earth tones, um, not in this one particularly, but um, there's certainly a lot of, of green uh, working its way through this one. Let me try this other blue, see what we can get with there. So I'm just kind of experimenting. You know, I think there's a lot of, uh, of artists and, and art teachers who, you know, want to mix up the exact right colors. I kind of like to play with it a little bit and, 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 and find the colors a little bit more rather than have everything set out. I mean, it's, it should be a little bit of a, a guessing game and playing with the materials. You got it all planned out. You're you're essentially just doing a, a paint by number, which can be fun in and of itself, but I wouldn't want to give a paint by number away to somebody for a gift. They would be expecting a little bit more from me, I think, but there we go. All right. So just working in sort of a variety of green. There's little, there's little spots of it up here. So I'm just going to kind of, I've got that little, it's bleeding a little bit in there. So this is where the paper towels come in really handy. Yeah, so you can just blot it out while, while it's still wet. As long as you get rid of that water, that is, um, that's gonna get rid of any mark that's associated with it. As long as it hasn't seeped into the paper, I mean, and look at the look at the size of the brush that I'm using too. That's another point that I really like to drive home with painting in general. Is um, so much of the time I see people using these tiny little brushes, you know, like something like this. That'll take you forever. We're trying to do this in an hour, so we're we're going to go a little bit uh, a little bit bigger, get a little bit more coverage. Kind of liking the the greens there. Um, there's this nice almost straight blue little shadow here. So I'm just gonna throw that in. And then I'm gonna throw that one in up here. It's starting to dry a little bit. Um, so it's not spreading quite as much. Um, there's little blades of blue grass up there. Again, the, these were colorist painters. They, they were very much about expressive bright colors, kind of in the, in the category of like a Vincent van Gogh or uh, Edward Munch, you know, who did the screen, uh, pretty famous painting. These are all artists that were sort of contemporaries of each other. Van Gogh being sort of an earlier one. Um, Paul Gauguin, a French post-impressionist, sort of in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, so they were all sort of the first real, gen first generation of, of uh, more experimental avant-garde painters, early 20th century. Hey, Mike, Picasso's. what size brush are you using? This one? Um, oh, it's, uh, it's really old. <laughs> it's got all its left off. So this one's a six. Um, I would guess this one's about a 10 and it's, ca it's called a filbert because it's got, it's kind of like a flat brush. But if you look at it this way, it's got, got a rounded edge as opposed, opposed to like a flat um, across there. So I'd say it's about a 10 or a 12. Um, this one's almost exactly the same and it is a 12. So, or, or, or a half inch brush. So it's about a half inch brush. There's different, um, different measuring uh, and, and size scales that different companies use. So it's, it's often hard to give a definitive answer there. This is still a little bit yellow up here. So I'm gonna th throw in a little bit more green. And you'll notice that, you know, green is sort of a, 
a cooler color because it's got blue in it. And all of the warmth in this painting is in the figure. Um, and that's very deliberate uh, by, by Gabrielle Munter. She would have you know, surrounded this warm figure with this cool colors to kind of create a nice uh, color contrast, a nice uh, temperature contrast in colors. So um, nothing is is by chance here. I mean, the 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 little subtle little um, adjustments I'm making to the greens and things are are up to chance, but it was definitely a sort of a warm, cool uh, situation with the overall color scheme. And that would have been something that Gabrielle Munter had probably thought out well ahead of time. So just knocking in a little bit of um, uh, texture in here as well. And I think I'm just going to let that sit. I kind of I kind of like how it there's a little bit of a fade here. It's sort of a little darker here and then it gets more up into this sort of yellow green. So I'm just going to let this sit for the time being and hopefully dry out and then I can come back and add a little bit more to it. So I'm going to clean my big brush and I'm probably going to go down to uh, a smaller brush. And I'm going to do that blue towel. And I think I'm just going to go with kind of a straight, a straight ultramarine. I believe this is ultramarine, but ultramarine or cobalt would would work fine. Um, ultramarine is kind of a, um, it's sort of a a purpley blue, and I definitely see some some purple in there. I'm really trying to watch out for this edge because this is still damp, and if I put that there it'll bleed out into here. So I'm, I'm just kind of creating a little bit of an edge. Also hoping that um, it's sort of setting up, the greens are setting up over here. Yeah, that seems, that seems to be a fairly good match of color. I might add a little bit of red in with it to give it more of a purple, purple hue. You is just another word for color. There we go. There's a little bit of a shadow hinted at under here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna tend to that as well. There we go. So this brush here that I'm using is a size eight and it's a round, um, so it's, it's different than the, the big one that I used out here. All right, so let's throw some red in there as well, just to kind of purple it up a little bit. So I'm just taking this kind of stop sign red. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna kind of throw it in there. Yeah, a little bit more of a purple. Purple is sort of the complement. It's not quite as light as what we have here. I am not a big fan of using white to lighten things in watercolor. Other colors or other uh, mediums like oils and uh, acrylics, I'll go to town with white. But um, the idea here is to use um, the white of the paper because watercolors are so transparent. So let me see if I can't lighten it a little bit with just water. Yeah, it's doing pretty good. And you can always blot some of it off. Let's take a little bit off, put it back on. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So I'm letting the white of the paper kind of create this lighter purple in here. And that water, as it moves around and kind of migrates across the page, it kind of creates all sorts of nice, uh, little unique watercolor type uh, reticulation and patterns and textures and all that good stuff. So it's really very distinct mark, marks if, if you're embracing all of the uh, um, aspects of watercolor. All right, so we're still waiting for a lot of this to dry. I think next good one to go for would be that red dress. Um, and I'm just going to go with this one up here, maybe a little bit of that, sort of a mix. This is sort of a little lighter and a slightly more orange. This is a little bit deeper. 
Um, so I kind of want it right in the middle, at least initially. And I'm not going to pre-wet this because uh, I already got enough water on the page. I don't really want to uh, tempt fate too much. So I'm just going to kind of describe the shape. Oh, I missed a little slab of green in there. So you can kind of do a little drawing as well. Like oh, I, I kind of messed that shape up a little bit. There we go. Easy, easy as. There we are. And this nice red really sings with all that green around it. So it's it's got a nice uh, uh, kind of color contrast that um, is definitely intentional. I'll bet when Gabrielle Muncher was talking to Ellen, she said, be sure to wear that red dress. It'll be perfect. Knowing, of course, that they were going to go out in, in a field. All right. Uh, okay, I think that's pretty good. Um, let's see. Do we want to tackle? Let's just do some of this gray. Um, the gray here and the gray here. So to mix that up, it's it's all it's all going to be very light because this is this is close to white, and so is this, and and around here it actually is white. So I'm not going to put much color there at all. But to make a make a gray, um, a good sort of starting starting point is to take colors that are sort of opposite each other. I mean, you can always get a gray and just use gray. Um, but like I'm taking blue and then I'm going to mix it with a little bit of uh, this orange. So that sort of makes a purple um, and then a little bit of this green in here. So I'm just sort of pulling a lot of different colors together. This is actually looking pretty good and I'm going to thin it out. Oh, look at that. That seems pretty good. Maybe a tad bit dark, but not too far off. Again, I could just do a little dab like this, take a lot of that paint off, pull this out, and then just kind of distribute that a little bit more. So the color is the same, but I've just I've just essentially lightened the value. And if I feel like I need to darken it, I can just add a little bit more pigment from over here. Yeah, it seems pretty good. So far, being uh, pretty pretty faithful to Gabrielle Munter. She's a really, really nice painter. A lot of just um, wonderful color. It's a really nice kind of breezy approach. Seem, makes it seem a little inconsequential, but these are really nice paintings. All right, there's that. Um, so I guess I could throw some. I'm gonna I'm gonna make uh, I'm gonna make this bowl of whatever it is um, a little bit different. I'm going to I'm going to sort of brighten it up slightly with um, maybe their maybe their pears or something. I'll just throw this. Just throw that in. It's a little different, a little brighter. OK, and actually, while I have this out, while the background is kind of uh, still a little wet. I'm going to throw a few little touches of, of yellow in here just to maybe get back. Some of the brightness of that yellow. So I didn't want to do it. Uh, I didn't want to do it too early because it would just dissipate and, and you know, you wouldn't have much uh, of, of, of the strength of it. I'm also going to take just some straight water here and just throw little dots in here. It's not going to do anything right off the bat, but I think eventually it's just going to kind of uh, make the uh, make the paint bleed a little bit and so create some nice texture. 
So this is, you know, as it's drying, it's not quite 100% dry. So when I put water on it, it kind of interacts with stuff in there, just creating a little bit of, of texture. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna, gonna be kind of crazy and bold here. We got, what, 18 minutes left. This should be just about right. I'm gonna put some white out. I know I'm contradicting myself a little bit, but we do have these white flowers in here. So I wanna see how these will look. If we just put them in. So I'm, I'm working this paint um, pretty thickly. Um, you know, not a lot of water here. I'm just going to see how this reacts with, with it. Yeah, it's not too bad. But this is something that, that could easily be kind of over the top pretty quickly. Um, so I'm going to kind of rejuvenate the white a little bit. This is more of a gouache approach. Um, gouache being a little bit more opaque, meaning you can't see through it. So I'm kind of imposing this color on here. Which is really, frankly, not um, the usual way to use watercolor. Watercolor is used uh, a little bit more transparently, but if you want something that's a little bit more solid, a little bit maybe more uh, firm, I guess would be a way of describing it. Um, you can go a little bit more opaque and, and kind of use it more like an acrylic. Um, but do that sparingly because it can often, especially if the water is still kind of open, um, because it will, um, it will create these kind of really goopy kind of toxic puddles that don't look good. I don't know of any gooey toxic puddles that do look good. So uh, it's pretty par for the course for something that's not doing what it's supposed to. Yeah, put a few more in there, put one right there. But I can see, I mean, you can see from here to here, this one's really strong and white and then it got a little grayer and then it got a little bit grayer. So if you feel like you need to kind of um, beef it up a little bit. You can give it a few layers. All right. Just having a little fun with that. I really want this one to be kind of big and, and noticeable. So I'll just add a little bit more there. Let's see, Maybe some more over here. So, you know, stylistically, this is not, this is not like realism. Uh, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, Rembrandt or Raphael or Michelangelo or something like that. This is a much, uh, a much looser, um, more, I guess you could say, expressive way of laying paint down. It's, you're, you're kind of just responding to, oh, there's a little bit of a white patch up there. So this can be kind of nice for people that aren't maybe super confident with their drawing. Uh, you can get sort of a nice um, bang for your buck, so to speak. You don't have to be too precious about all the all, any you know details and things like that. Okay, I'll just leave that be. All right. So now I'm going to try uh, and get her flesh tone, which can be a bit tricky. Um, and in order to do this effectively, I want to clean up. Because uh, I'm going to use some yellow ochre, so I'm just going to clean up all this excess green around here as much as I can. Get rid of that. Because if you get even a small amount of like blue for a skin tone, um, it makes them look blue. <laughs> it's it's not uh, it's not a good look, oftentimes. So I really want to um, try and avoid that. So I start with a yellow ochre. I mean, a good sort of Caucasian uh, skin tone is, you know, a yellow ochre and like a red or an orange. And then with watercolor, actually, I think it's, it's a little bit easier because you can make it light or make it dark uh, just, you know, just by spreading it around and adding a little bit more water. So that's, that's pretty heavy and that's pretty orange. Um, 
but I'm going to start with that and just kind of kind of thin it out. I'm not adding any more paint. So now I'm just taking what I have already and just kind of moving it around. There we go. So that's that's actually pretty good. I think I may go back and make this area around her a little bit darker. I am leaving a little bit of an edge here where there's a slight hint of a highlight. One, to give it a highlight, and two, to make sure it doesn't bleed into that green and then, you know, all of a sudden she's got, you know, uh, some sort of skin ailment that we don't want her to have. Hey, Mike. Yeah. So Karen asked, could you use masking liquid for white flowers? Uh, yep, you sure can. That's another thing. That's something that I don't really have time for today, but they work great. So masking fluid is just kind of, it's kind of like rubber cement. And so you would, you know, you would put it here before you even started painting instead of doing the white like I did. Um, and then uh, once the painting is all done, you can kind of just rub the, uh, and let that dry, commence your painting. And then once everything's dry, you can just kind of peel it off and boom, you got white paper right there. Yeah, that's a great question. Masking fluid can be quite handy. Okay, we're getting to the home stretch here. I said to myself, I'm gonna finish this one. I'm gonna finish this one. And I will not tell a lie. So I'm gonna finish. All right, I'm gonna throw this. I'm just gonna kind of work here uh, quickly. So I'm just taking kind of a like nice earthy brown block in the hair. That's a pretty good mix. Sometimes when you get the color right, um, it's just kind of nice to sort of be on the same wavelength, if, you know, if you're doing a master copy. Um, ah, uh, because you know exact, I mean, like I think whatever color I put in there, I think it was like a burnt sienna or a burnt umber. Um, that's pretty much what you use for the hair there. That looks pretty good. Um, all right. So she's there. She's got uh, sort of a nice spin in the sun, an hour or two tan to it. So I think that's pretty good. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of sort of the center. So a few more details in here, just throw a little bit more. Can't really see that too well. There we go. Let's throw a little bit of that in there. Um, one thing that I want to do is I kind of want to make it a little bit darker green around the figure just to make her pop out a little bit. Um, so I'm just gonna mix up, uh, actually, I'll just use this. I do this a lot. It's like, oh, that color, yeah, it's close enough, it'll work. So now I'm just gonna take this sort of variety of blues here and throw it in there. And I need some more yellow ochre. So I'll just throw that in there. Yellow ochre is, it's one of the most common colors you're going to see in, in painting and in Western painting, especially because um, it's just it's 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 yellow. It's bright, but it's not that bright. And it just gives you kind of a really nice. Genuine uh, mix of color I'm gonna add a little bit more of that. Yeah, there we go. So now I'm, I'm really going to uh, make this dark green kind of go along the edge and give us a little bit more definition. We'll go around this flower a little bit as well, just to make that pop out. Being a little heavy handed here. But that's, that seems to be a, a pretty good decision, I think. And I missed under there. Right along this nice light skin tone edge. So all these warm colors in here are contrasting really nicely with this, with this kind of cool green that I'm putting around it.
Yeah, there we go. I like that better. So taking a few liberties here, um, I'm probably not going to have time to do the black outline, which is a actually a pretty big element. So instead of that really strong, uh, almost ink outline, I'm going to go a little bit darker um, and, and kind of create that nice sense of contrast. So that's that's my thinking there. It's it's replacing it's replacing that strong outline in black, which would look really great. And um, you know, I kind of encourage you to do it if you want to go for it. But um, I don't think things are quite dry enough. If I did it, it would probably um, bleed into the skin tones and things like that. So um, I'm leaving that by the wayside. Kind of looks like a, uh, a fried egg more than a flower, but maybe that's what these are. She's hard boiled eggs. There we go. Actually, this green is, is working quite nicely. So I'm gonna mix up a little bit more of it. So a little bit of the, the yellow ochre to kind of calm it down. So Joanna is wondering, are you blending in your edges or is an abrupt edge the intention? The intention is an, an abrupt edge, especially when I go around the figure, um, because I don't want this green to kind of leak in there. So I'm being, uh, actually the way I'm painting now is, is much less uh, in keeping with watercolor. I mean, initially I laid in in sort of a very traditional watercolor. Now I'm being a little bit heavier and a little bit darker. Um, and so it has a bit more of a, like you can see my brush strokes before it kind of spread everything out. Um, now I'm just doing a little bit more um, kind of heavy marks and it's dry or it's dry, it's dry-ish. Um, so it's, um, it's not spreading as much. Now I just added a little bit more uh, water to kind of darken that up a little bit. There we go. I mean, my last little flourishes, I think, are going to be the facial features. Saving that for last, though. It also has kind of a nice little glow around the edge, which, which the acrylic painting doesn't, or the oil painting doesn't have. Make it just, just darkening that background a little bit more, but letting, letting little pops of yellow come through. Making some executive decisions here as we come into the home stretch. All right, I kind of I kind of like it a little bit with it a little bit darker, so I'm I'm happy with that. So now I'm just going to take. Uh, I think I'm going to finish. This is a momentous occasion. I've got a nice, very detailed brush here, and I'm just going to make a I'm just going to make a dark. I'm going to take some of this uh, this brown, dark brown over here. Maybe throw a little bit of this blue in there. And this is where you can mess it up in one fell swoop, but I think, I think we'll be all right. All right, it looks pretty good. It's not quite the right color. This is a little bit browner on the, on the actual painting. And see, this is what it would look like if I did the dark dark edges, you can get a little sense of it there. Um, the mouth is red, so we'll just give, give it this. It's not like super red. That'll probably be enough. I don't want that red to sort of match her dress. There we go, that's pretty close. All right. Oh, and look at that. We got a little bit of time to spare. So I, I maybe will try and do some slight outlining selectively just to show you what it would look like. Um, so I'm just mixing up. You could use just straight black, but I'm, 
I, I always like the mix of black, get a little bit more control over it. I'm gonna maybe give it a little bit more of a, a warm color. So I'm adding a little bit of this maroon to that outline. The blue will take it further away from that, but that's kind of nice, a nice purple. So let's just get the shape of her head. Let's just shoot for that. Ooh, that's, that's a little bit bleedy. Go. Let's see what else. So we did have somebody ask if they could just use a black pen to outline. Black pen? Hey, sure. If you, it's your painting. I will not call the police in your local area if you want to <laughs> do that. That is totally fine. Blending materials, you know, using, uh, you know, ink with watercolor, colored pencil, even markers. I've seen people do that as well. All, if, as long as it works, go for it. Yeah, I kind, I kind of think this is kind of a crucial piece of the puzzle, this nice outline. I, I didn't even make the attempt to uh, throw in the thing that she's holding there. I'm just gonna have to let it remain a mystery. Oh, look at that, we're almost done. Not too bad. Is everybody else done? Are we ready to maybe do a little show and tell, or at least show. Not too much telling with you muted, but. Um, oh, it's hard to hold that steady line all the way down. But uh, there we go. And we have ourselves a lovely little watercolor that I'm sure somebody in the world will love. You put it in a mat and you put it in a frame and it's actually, it, they look awesome. Um, you know, a lot of people uh, kind of poo poo the framing thing. And it's like, oh, if it doesn't, if it doesn't look good by itself, you know, it's not gonna look good in a frame. Um, that's not always true. You know, you can, you can kind of up your game a little bit with a nice frame. I mean, obviously you want the painting to, to work on its own merits, but um, there's, uh, there's something to be said about a nice, a nice frame. So maybe we can do a little uh, spotlighting for people if they want to do, uh, if they want to brave the outside world and show other people what they've been working on. Oh, right, Sarah, very nice. Yes, she looks, she looks so lonely in that field all by herself. But nice, you got that nice big bright red, excellent. And BJ, yeah, nice, good. You got all the basic big color shapes established. That's really what we were after today. Yeah, Claudia, yeah, that looks great, Claudia. Excellent. I really like the, the way you kind of modulated all that background color, all those greens and yellows, that looks really good. Yeah, Susan, Susan, yeah, that looks great, excellent. She looks formidable and Ed's iPad and the person holding that iPad, that looks also wonderful. Also Susan, if I remember correctly. Susan, is it Susan? No. No, no. oh, maybe not. Okay. We'll get it one of these days. I'll stop calling you Ed. <laughs> the, uh, the texture on that looks really nice, the way you built up the greens and the yellows as well. And Gigi? All right, that looks great. Yeah, that the see how that red really pops out of that background. Looks awesome. Alejandra. Yeah, great. Did you use a pen or did you use it looks like watercolor? Okay, cool. Yeah. Very nice. Watercolor. All right, excellent. And then amber. All right, amber. Great. I mean, you can see how this, this color scheme is really, uh, it's really, it's, it's subtle in the sense that it's like, it looks easy, but the choices she makes really make that 
that red dress and the warm skin tones pop out from that that really cool background. That's that's really nice. Oh yeah, Donna, that looks great. Gave her a little bit more space to stretch out in, and yours is a little bit bigger. Good, good. Oh yeah, I like that kind of dry brush technique where that yellow is kind of shining through that all that green. Looks awesome, Benita. Very good. Yeah. And then Bob. Yeah. A little bit more, a little bit more refined. The 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 anatomy on that one looks really nice with the, uh, got the sort of the twist of the upper torso away from the legs kind of in profile. That really stands out. Yeah, Arthur, that looks great. You really got those deep greens um, established in there nicely. That looks great. Really nice. Kylie, yep. Sort of went a little bit more blue green with the background. That looks good too. Sort of a turquoise almost. That's a nice, nice touch. Christina, yeah, excellent. Kept the yellow up top a little bit more than, than I did in the end. It looks good. Sarah, excellent. Another Sarah, yeah. And Roxanne, great. Nice and loose brush strokes. Very expressive. How you doing? Ed's pet is really Diane. Okay, Ed, you're you're really Diane. All right, Alex. Oh yeah, good. Nice little sort of strong dark marks in the background to give it a little bit of texture to break up all that green. Good. Allie, excellent. Yeah, you could keep playing around with that, even build it up even more. Jackie. Yeah, I want a little bit more sort of earthy green in yours, sort of a darker green. Very cool. And then Sherry, yeah, great. Ooh, you want a little more pink with the with the shirt uh, or sort of a, yeah, that looks great. Kind of a pinkish purple. Yeah, same there, river. That looks great. That's also sort of a, another softer, more pastel. All right, nice work, Jennifer. Very good. That's about the right size too for, you know, snap that off, put it in a frame, boom. Christmas is done. You got it all sorted out. Awesome. Nice work. Trisha. Oh, man, we got lots of people. That looks great. That blue is it's that's more sort of like a real deep sky blue. That looks great, too. Yeah. Oh, and then Patty went with the drawing. Very good. These these can often these these type of paintings can be nice. Uh, just do quick little sketches, um, and you'll be surprised at how how knowledgeable these artists were. They make they make the anatomy look easy. Simran, yeah, all right, cool. Lisa, oh yeah, that's a little bit more earthy. The red is a little bit is a little bit slightly softer and a little bit more. Um, Kind of got a sienna in it almost, it looks like. It's not that real super bright one. That looks great too. And then Terry, looks like there's a little bit more detail on that one. Excellent. This is a prolific group. Marion, oh yeah. Ooh, I like a lot of that texture in the background. You added some more earth tones in the background. That looks really good too giving me some ideas, but I'm done. I finished this one. I'm not gonna do it anymore. Ooh, that looks cool. What did you use? Is that is that watercolor as well? Yeah, it is. I can see it. I just couldn't see it very well. Yeah, nice. Kind of loose, airy brush strokes. A little bit more texture in the brush strokes as well for Dawn. Oh yeah, can't see the name there, but that looks really nice. Yeah, very cool. And see, with that one, you could cut it. You could kind of uh, you could cut it down if you wanted to out of that bigger piece of paper. Oh, we got another one, Allie. Yeah, excellent. That's kind of almost a purple. Well, great work, folks. That was quite the stream of people willing to show their their paintings. Awesome. So um, next week is the the uh, uh, premium class, I think it's called. And we're going to talk about getting intense color with watercolor. So if you want to show up for that, uh, just register for that and I'll see you next week. 
Um, and then the week after that is our last one of the year for um, another quick watercolor. They'll all be sort of in this size range. So um, I hope to see you all down the road. And thanks again. This looked great. And we'll see you next time. Thanks again. Toodaloo.